Right, so web apps, native apps, so basically every kind of apps. Um, so the boring part stuff, uh, just I introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Vincent and I'm an iOS developer. So I, I, to be fair, I, I also worked uh, sometimes with uh, PHP more than Ruby, but don't worry because it's not what I'm here to talk about. Don't freak out, please. No, um, so I work uh, in Lyon here uh, at a company called Chazino where we build applications for scientists. And uh, here's where you can find me on the internet and on Twitter. So, big question of our times, web apps versus native apps. I mean, it's the kind of question that you hear a lot uh, when you start a project. And uh, you, you can see how this kind of decision can really impact all the aspects of the project, right? I mean, technology you're going to use, obviously. Also the people you're going to need to build this. And really actually the thing that you're trying to build. This, uh, this is an important question. And it's a question that became more relevant, I think, now that we live in the mobile world. Um, and why is that? Well, I think the big point is that we're always connected now. I mean, we all have internet connection in our pockets, and that's awesome. Um, and the funny thing is that now we have modern browsers. I mean, there's no IE 6 or 7 in uh, the mobile world, so that's great. I mean, uh, when you know about HTML5, you know that uh, these are good conditions to work with. Oh, and by the way, this old dude, this is Martin Cooper, and he invented the cell phones, so everything is his fault. Um, so yeah, people started to think about uh, how to build mobile application, and they say, well, I'm going to build web apps. And so I, I just wanted to take a step back and um, talk a bit about the short history of web apps on mobile to get some perspective. So, whoops, sorry, uh, that, not that long ago. <laughs> no, uh, 2007, when the Apple introduced the first iPhone. So. Um, I mean, people uh, forgot, but at that time, the only solution for third-party developers like ourselves to build applications for the iPhone was to build web apps. There was nothing else. <laughs> and so they even had kind of a web app store, we can say. So you had categories, you could submit your own apps. I mean, all of this was uh, the first year of the iPhone. And uh, actually, this web page was still online last month when I was preparing this talk. And uh, I just checked this week, and I would redirect to the App Store page. But I mean, this uh, web app support from Apple, uh, as surprising as it seems, uh, lasted quite a long, uh, a long time. And uh, another example that I think is interesting to, um, to talk about is in 2009 when Palm introduced uh, WebOS. Now, you might remember Palm. I mean, they were doing some great stuff with mobile for uh, a few years now. And um, they had this idea that if we want to build a, an operating system for the mobile world, well, maybe the, the good idea is to build everything as a web app. And so they built this thing, and the whole interface was based on WebKit. And all the applications were written in HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So it was great. But what happened now? Well, in 2013, Apple, as you probably know, prefers native apps. And it's been pretty successful so far, with uh, over 50 billion downloads from the App Store. As for Palm, well, things really went bad. And uh, Palm doesn't exist anymore. And WebOS has been sold twice and kind of open source. I mean, it's a very sad story. And um, the takeaway, I guess, uh, oh, sorry, let's talk about native apps first. Yeah. So, uh, meanwhile, in the other side of the mobile world, if you will, um, there are things that uh, were built as native first. So, this expression means that basically, if you want to start something uh, fast, you you won't care about building a web application for every kind of uh, OS available. You're just going to build a native client. And the perfect example, of course, is Instagram. I think uh, a lot of you are familiar with this uh, social network. 
And so it began uh, a bit more than two years ago. And they just built a very simple app just for the iPhone. And obviously, the web service behind that, I think it was Django, but could have been Rails. And uh, it's been extremely successful. Um, now they have uh, 100 million users. I mean, um, when, they, when they realized that, Facebook really freaked out. And they say, oh, you know what? Uh, 100 million users isn't cool, but you, you know what's cool? Yeah. No, that's Justin Timberlake, sorry. Um, so they bought Instagram, actually, and now they expanded to have an Android client. They even have kind of the web apps where you can uh, visualize your photo stream. So yeah, things worked well. And um, yeah, the takeaway is that seems to, uh, things seem to work better for native apps than for web apps. And what's the problem, really? I mean. Well, the biggest problem, maybe, is uh, connectivity problems. How many times have you seen something like that on your smartphone? I mean, no internet connection, please try again in a few minutes, please try again later, yeah. Well, okay, I have an objection here, I'm sure. Uh, what about the HTML5 offline caching capabilities, right? It exists for web apps. Well, it's true, technically, but I mean, if you look at Google, for instance, which is basically the king of web application, uh, they really struggle to put offline capabilities into their apps like Gmails and uh, Google Docs. So I think there are, there are really big problems like uh, fragmentations and uh, uh, you know, limitation in the, uh, what you can do with a web app that makes it just easier to do and more efficient with a native app. And that brings me to uh, the other big point, is that web apps have limited APIs compared to native apps. And uh, just one example, really, but there uh, could be a lot more, is um, on the iPhone, for instance, there's this API for geofencing. So geofencing is where you, you define a geographic area, and every time the device gets into this area physically, your application gets notified. And if, it's, uh, if it wasn't launched, it gets launched in the background, and so you can do stuff based on the location. I mean, it's just an example, of this, but this is the kind of thing that usually you can do on a web apps, or tell me if I'm wrong, but basically you have a lot of great APIs for the web apps, but you always have more stuff on the native side. Uh, but in the end, maybe the biggest issue really is um, the confusing interface. And let's just take a look at the uh, Twitter official clients, or clients, really. Because so you, you have the web apps on the left, and then the iOS, Android, and Windows Phone apps. And as you can see, I mean, they're all different. And there's a good reason for that. And the reason is that each platform has a set of conventions. There's a lot of graphic conventions, of course, that we can see like uh, having the, um, a toolbar at the top or at the bottom. But there's so many details and just experience, uh, user experience conventions that make them so different. And when you build a web app, I mean, you need to find some kind of universal language to speak to everyone. And it's kind of difficult. I mean, it's great to be able to build one thing for all the platforms, but it's also a major problem and at least a major difficulty. So that's why when you're building a native client, you can really focus on one experience, and it's easier for the user, which is used to this experience, to use your app. So what's my, what's my takeaway on this? Web apps don't work on mobile? Well, not exactly. Um, web apps are not really dead. It's just that they need to go deeper. And uh, what I mean by that is that, <laughs> got that. Um, what I mean by that is that really um, you can build a native application, and inside of it you can build uh, what we call the web view, where you can put web stuff. And uh, that's a good way sometimes to leverage the capabilities of web apps and to take advantage of that inside a native client. So. A few cases where it's uh, really interesting. 
Like, for instance, when you're building an application that really depends on the internet connection. I mean, who wants to browse a eBay if there's no internet connection, really? I mean, this application is uh, mostly native, but there's also web stuff in it, and that's perfectly fine because you're not going to browse eBay if you don't have an internet connection. And um, talking about the uh, interface, there's obviously a lot of things that you can do with the web interface that is very difficult to do with the native apps. If you have a complicated layout, like for a news site or news application, well, you don't need to build your own web engine. I mean, really, just use WebKit or the web view that is available on your platform, and uh, it's usually the best solution. And um, a last point that I wanted to mention is that sometimes you really need to have real-time updates for your application. For instance, you have a music store and you want to provide a um, streaming service for an album that is coming next week. And so you build something like that. And um, you have a Listen Now button that was uh, available just for one week. And it's, it was very easy for Apple to push that on the um, iTunes application. Because basically, there's a lot of web stuff going on behind this view. And uh, it's very easy to add an audio tag where you can uh, start to stream an album. And as soon as the album gets available for sale, you just throw it away, and, uh, and you're good. And your uh, user don't have to update anything. It's just the, well, the, uh, the interest of having a web app. So what I'm getting at is that I think it's time to build uh, what I would call a hybrid apps. So it's this idea that um, I think that native clients really are important to bring a certain level of quality um, in terms of user experience and in terms of available, available APIs. But it's not to say that uh, web applications just need to be thrown away. They're both very useful. And uh, what's great is that you don't really have to choose between one or another. You can build um, the same stuff together inside the same app. So in the end, I mean, what can you do now? Well, <laughs> you can learn Java. You can learn Objective-C. No, but you can also discover RubyMotion. I think it's going to be m much more interesting for you. And uh, it's, uh, as you probably know by now, it's a, it's a technology to build uh, native clients using Ruby. And there's a workshop tomorrow, so uh, I think it's a perfect, uh, perfect timing to, to start doing that. OK, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm a bit uh, faster than uh, expected, so maybe I can take one or two questions. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so you managed to get questions. Yeah, it wasn't oh, okay. expected. Did you get to play with Fire Firefox OS? No, I didn't play with it. I, I, I was thinking about mentioning this because it really reminds me, uh, for what I've seen, of WebOS. And uh, when we think about WebOS, I mean, there's a lot of reason why it failed. But basically, it struck me as a kind of a bad idea. I don't know. I'm not very optimistic about it, but we'll see. It's just, uh, yeah, very similar to what happened with WebOS. So I noticed on some of the uh, screenshots you were showing, you were using iOS 7 uh, for the web browser. Do you yeah. think that with, with the way Apple have started implementing some of their nice new UI tweaks with parallaxes and things like that, that yeah. the web-based applications on, from an iOS point of view are going to start to look a little bit dated and a little bit not quite as fresh? Yeah, uh, big question. Um, I think it's um, maybe it's related to the point that I made about having limited APIs, I mean, at least for the graphical side of your question, when uh, native apps can, it can be easier for them to build uh, this kind of awesome, um, you know, uh, glossy things, uh, really easy to, to work. And um, that's a way of keeping a certain distance, of uh, keeping, um, getting always ahead of the competition, I think, for Apple to build new APIs and to do new stuff, because obviously the web applications are also getting better. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's a way for them to keep a certain distance. Okay, so I wasn't even supposed to take questions. So yeah, maybe the last one. I don't. Know. 
Not up to okay, me. Okay, this will be the last one. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, in, my, in my in my opinion, you can have you, you can have innovation on uh, one platform when you have uh, competitors, and uh, in my opinion, I think that the major problem for web apps on mobile is uh, currently is Apple, because they don't uh, they don't allow competition on iOS, they don't allow different web engines on web on uh, iOS. And uh, you can you cannot have uh, innovation. You c you cannot you if you don't have uh, innovation. Well, if um, you don't have competitors, you don't have innovation. Well, but there's competitors. There's Android and there's all the other stuff. So if Apple gets stuck into bad uh, technology or I don't know a bad platform all the time, I think it. Yeah, but the problem is that they only release uh, one uh, one one uh, new version of iOS every every year. Yeah, but I mean, there's a HTML5 capable browser. You can uh, you can run web apps. Uh, I don't know. It I, I'm seems fine to me, but uh, it's a big big yeah. question we can take about. I, I'm pretty sure there's no way to cover <laughs> the topic in five minutes. Sorry, maybe hours. <laughs> we need hours to cover this topic. No, thanks uh, everyone. Thank you very much, Vincent. <laughs> yes, uh,